evening everyone. I hope that as you join me this evening that you are safe and that you are well and that this week has been one which has proven to be an encouragement to you as the lockdown begins to ease a little bit and we can enjoy catching up with people, which is something I think we have all discovered that we've really actually missed. I do wonder through it in this time about just how much it's enabled us to connect and relate to Jesus perhaps in ways that we were unable to previously. Things that we maybe just didn't quite understand um, and that now all of a sudden scriptures that maybe once didn't have much meaning to us in just because we can relate to them now all of a sudden come to life. I hope that um, as we look through the book of Philippians, this is very much one which does that for us. We're into one of the most remarkable parts of scripture when it comes to Christology, when it comes to understanding who Jesus is and what that means for this world and what it means to follow his example and how we live our lives as well. Um, Jesus, as these verses that we're going to look at this, this evening tell us, is remarkable in so many ways, but I think fundamentally he's remarkable and how he is willing to stoop down, to humble himself, even to the point of suffering, so that he could be a blessing to others. But in doing so, in humbling himself, what he shows us is that for those who are willing to humble themselves, they give God the space to exalt them. And of course, when it comes to ourselves, that we're never talking about a situation where we are going to be ascending to the right hand of God on high. But nonetheless, we're shown a pattern of life when it comes to walking in the steps of Jesus, who is our Lord and who is our Saviour. So let's have a look at our reading this evening. And again, we're just looking at a few verses and then we'll consider the implications of those and how we understand Jesus and in how we understand ourselves and the life that we are called to as well. Again, this week I'm reading from the English Standard Version and we're looking at Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And it says this, And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Again, what we're reminded of here is the humanity of Jesus Christ, that he was found in human form. A lot of Christian theologians and Christians themselves can get caught up in this remarkable truth that Jesus was both fully human and fully God. What does that mean and how could such a thing be true? Well, of course, we, we're not able to reconcile those things effectively in our minds because we're dealing with concepts that are somewhat beyond our understanding. But we're reminded again that here was Jesus, the one who was in the form of God, who sat in heaven and splendour and perfection. Here he is now in human form. He has humbled himself. He has come to this earth and is now sharing the same experiences that we do. And this is why scripture would says that Jesus was tempted in every way we are. He understands our struggles, yet he was without sin. Jesus shared fully in this human experience what it means to be a person. And he did so as God incarnate. It's a remarkable humility that Jesus shows, humbling himself in that way so that he could come and do the mission that God has called him to. I can't actually think, if I'm honest, of an of a example, humanly speaking, in which we would find ourselves having to stoop so low. But what it does tell us is that there is no situation, there is no people on this earth that we 
are not called to humble ourselves in order to draw near to them so that we can show to them the good news of Jesus Christ. We are not to store up in ourselves privilege, but empty ourselves too, so that we can serve and bless and proclaim the truth of this remarkable God who would leave heaven itself and come to earth in the same type of body that we have, so that he could draw people back to God. The truth is, I think for a lot of us, we have what you could call a yuck factor. A people who we don't want to be seen with. A people through whom we don't want to be associated with. That might be different for lots of us. It might be because of their ideologies and what they stand for. It might be because we disagree with them. It might be due to their culture. It might be due to their practices. It might be due to how they appear. It might be due to how they smell. But when you think that Jesus, who was in heaven, in splendor and majesty, would choose to humble himself to come and be found in human form to reconcile people to himself, we can't grasp the type of humility that requires. But let me be, be certain on this. The type of humility it requires for us to associate, to draw near and to bring light into the groups of those around us is nothing in comparison. So as we look around us at some of these groups that we might think, I don't want to be associated with them, let me ask the question, are we praying for those groups? Are we wrestling with that question, how can I serve that group? The honest answer is a lot of the time we're not, but we ought to be. Because Jesus is our example. The one who would humble himself. Who would take on our experience. So that we could begin to have some of his. So that we could begin to know the Father. So that we could begin that relationship with God once more. So that the sin which entangled us so greatly and failed to entangle Jesus, its power would be broken. Jesus did all of this for humility. Through the willingness to sacrifice. He showed the power of God as made manifest in its greatest possible way through these practices. Jesus gave up his comfort, his power, his splendor, his glory, and certainly in its most obvious forms, so that he could come and change situations and change this world. I wrestle with the question, am I willing to do that? in the situations that I see around me so that I can bring some of God's light there. As Christians, we're called not to stand apart from condemnation, but to bring the light, the love, the hope, and the truth of God into every situation. That's a challenge, but it's an exciting one. As we look to Jesus, we see one who calls us on into such challenges. But the verses say that Jesus, he didn't just humble himself to become human and to see what it was like and try it out for a bit. No, they tell us that Jesus humbled himself in obedience to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus would come not merely to try out what it means to be human. He came, the immortal died. Jesus would humble himself to the point where he would experience death. And it says not even merely death, he would experience death on a cross. And there's a real significance to that statement because the death on a cross was, as we know from, from, from a, our perspective, this was the worst 
possible kind of death. It, even today, we haven't generally dreamt up such barbaric ways of ending another human being's life. It was brutal. It was awful. It was suffocating. It was painful. And Jesus would endure that. King of all heaven, crucified. Remarkable humility. Remarkable sacrifice. But from the other perspective, the, 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 Jesus dying on a cross was also uh, an indication of one who is cursed. Scripture says that cursed is he who hangs on a tree. And it says in 1 Corinthians, we preach Christ crucified, the stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. And this is because for a Jewish person, this whole concept of dying on a cross, nothing redemptive could possibly happen from that. It was a curse. Some commentators argue that such a death would indicate that one is even outside of the covenant of God. And yet this is what Jesus would endure. A humiliating death from a physical standpoint, but a humiliating death from a cultural standpoint because the Romans would see him as a criminal, worthy of death. And the Jews would see him as cursed and cut off from God. So it becomes then what, what Paul articulates as a stumbling block. Here in Galatians, Paul would say, Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming that curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus' death wasn't just to experience what humility and humiliation feels like. It was for a very important purpose. Jesus would humble himself in those ways so that he could break the curse that we experience through sin. So that that would be rendered powerless. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 it says, For our sake God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus would humble himself. Jesus would endure that cross. He would experience that. He would endure that. So that he could make us the righteousness of God. So that he could break the power of sin over us. We love hearing that it's fantastic news. This is how much God loves you and how much he loves me and how much he loves others. He would do this. And offer us in grace and in mercy and in compassion. Redemption not through our earning but simply receiving it because God is gracious. Isn't that amazing? And, and we should be so encouraged by that. But there is a slight challenge there as well, isn't there? If Jesus was willing to humble himself, to break that curse and set us free, do we have any grounds on which we can stand apart from others? and look down upon them and record and note their mistakes and their sins and their blind spots without us being willing to humble ourselves and enter in and look to show them the grace and love of God. For if God is willing to do this for us, surely he is calling us to show this reality to those around us. It's very easy for us to stand apart from folks to look down on others. But I think in doing so, we may protect ourselves, but we do a disservice to the grace that we have received because we fail to show consistently the same thing to those around us. And that is incredibly challenging because I don't know about yourselves, but I'm not always the most naturally gracious person. But it doesn't change that call that God has placed on my life. The Spirit, he is in us and he compels us to be more like Jesus. 
therefore, because Jesus humbled himself, because Jesus would take on the shame and the humiliation of the cross and trust of God, therefore God has exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name. This Jesus who dwelt in splendor with God would humble himself in the most remarkable ways, ways which we, we can intellectually grapple with, but we can't fathom in the fullest extent because we don't know the context of heaven itself. We can't fully grasp his humbling. But we can enough to know that we ought to humble ourselves. And what God would do, because Jesus would humble himself in these ways, is he would create an example to the world. Because Jesus would do these things, this this great Christian of him of old says, God's exalted him, therefore God has exalted him. And given him the name which is above every other name. There is no greater name in all of creation. There is no greater name in heaven itself than the name of Jesus Christ. The one who would die in hum humility. The one who would offer himself to God. Even when it wasn't easy. Remember the Garden of Gethsemane. Even when it wasn't easy. But in trust and obedience, and humility, and in love, he would go there. And therefore God has exalted him. Jesus Christ is Lord of heaven and earth, as songs for 2,000 years have celebrated and as many verses declare. And this Lord is one who sets before us a remarkable path, a path which says, walk in my steps. Be those who are willing to humble yourselves. Because humbling ourselves is perhaps one of the greatest leaps of faith we can make. It, may, it means not relying on our own capacity and our own strength and our own cunning. And if we're honest, we often rely on these things. It means stepping into a place of vulnerability where sacrifice may be asked of us. I mean stepping into a place of trust where we place ourselves in God's hands and sincerely say, thy will be done. That's not easy for us because in every situation, security and safety are so important. This is why we lock our doors at night. But I guess it boils down to this core question. Do we trust the God revealed in Jesus Christ. Do we trust the promises of Jesus himself? Behold, I am with you always. Here is my spirit, the helper. He will help you. Do we trust this God enough to take those steps of faith? To humble ourselves. To draw close to others, even if they might make us feel a little bit uncomfortable. This doesn't mean, of course, being stupid and putting ourselves in dangerous situations. But it does mean moving beyond our comfort zones and perhaps the comfort zones of the culture that we live in as well. It does mean moving past the theological comfort zones that we develop for ourselves as well. Because the humility of Jesus transcends all of that and calls us to imitate his ways. And that is profoundly challenging. This is why Peter would say, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, in his time he will exalt you. In his time he will exalt you. The great challenge for us then is, is that something that we are willing to do? Because if we are, the great promise and the, the joy of this is the one who humiliates himself and, and let's be clear that's in a sense what he did on that cross the humility of Jesus led to humiliation and mockery but he would endure that he would suffer that he would sacrifice for that to break the power of sin and death and he is exalted and sits enthroned at the father's right hand so when we take these steps of faith he gets it he knows it ain't easy he knows it's difficult. He knows we're weary of sacrifice. He knows we want to avoid it. 
Jesus knows this stuff because in Gethsemane his prayer was if this cup can pass let it be so he felt that fear of what he would endure so much so that he would sweat blood his capillaries would rupture but he came to that place where he was able to say nevertheless not my will but yours be done and I think this Jesus who walks with us and who is lifting us up every time we fall down and is strengthening us and who is encouraging us on the walk that he calls us on desires to help us utter those words as well. When the fear comes, when the discomfort comes, when the call comes and we find ourselves in that place where we're honestly saying, I don't want this cup. Where Jesus can help us, where Jesus can draw near to us and help us find the faith, the trust, the strength to conclude the sentence to by saying, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So what do I want us to consider from this. I want us to consider the remarkable Jesus who sits enthroned at God's right hand, the one who would become fully human, the one who would humble himself in those ways, even to death on a cross so that he could set us free. He calls us not to sit on a grace-filled throne in judgment of others, but to get down in the dirt like he did to serve others so that they too can see the Jesus that we know. And that's hard. And Jesus knows it's hard. And what a great comfort it is then to know that the one who sits enthroned in heaven isn't one who can't relate to that difficulty, but gets it. And promises us that he is with us always, even to the end of the age. So as we turn to him and cry out to Jesus, help me when a difficult cup comes. He's one who is there and with us and working to help us be able to say, I will be done. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that the life that we are called to live in Jesus Christ is one built upon his obedience and humility, his victory, his exaltation to your right hand. Help us, Father, as we live this life of faith in which we trust in the goodness and victory of Jesus Christ a wonder which secures our status before you. Help us, Father, to trust in Jesus. Help us, Father, by your Spirit's power and anointing to seek to imitate him, to show his ways and our culture, to show his light to our nation, to show his love to a world seeking love, to show hope to a world which is often experienced in sensations of hopelessness. Help us not to stand apart, feeling that that is safe, because the truth is it isn't, because it's not what Jesus would do. Help us to be willing to climb from down from our comfort, to enter in to the struggles of our culture and world, to bring God's light and love, and hope, and justice. Forgive us when we get this stuff wrong, Lord, because we do, and help us. Help us to be a people who can get to that place where we can say, nevertheless, thy will be done. Thank you, Lord, that this isn't a struggle we do alone, but a walk that we walk with Jesus, with the Spirit, and in fellowship with the Father. Thank you. Amen. Well, hope everyone stays safe and that you take care and that you have a wonderful week. Above all, make this a week in which you seek to draw closer to your Lord and Saviour in which you abide in him. And may we be blessed as we seek to make Jesus' love real in our lives and to make it manifest before those around us. Take care, everyone. See you next week.